This demonstration is to show the capabilities of the circuits lab in virtual physics. Uh, just the basic capabilities as outlined in, if, in the worksheets for physics, specifically uh, the circuits diagram worksheet in Beyond Labs. The circuits lab could be accessed from the circuits category here in the physics lab, as well as from any of the pre-built worksheets. If a student or a user were to click on any, most of these worksheets, it would come with a preloaded circuit created that they would then be able to utilize on the worksheet. Uh, you could also click on the clipboard here to change the structure of the lab as needed. Uh, with the circuits diagram worksheet that this demonstration is based off of, it actually starts with a blank circuits lab. Uh, the, the, the purpose of this lab is to show students how circuit diagrams work, how a breadboard works, and allow them the freedom to explore with different things on the breadboard and circuit diagrams. The circuits lab has resistors, large and small, large and small inductors, large and small capacitors, as well as wires and light bulbs. Uh, and the tools we have here, we have a oscillating power source, we have a battery power source, a multimeter that can measure the voltage, the resistance, and the amperage. We also have an oscilloscope here that students can use as needed. So the nice thing about this circuits diagram lab, or the circuit lab in general, is students can build a diagram and what they are building is reflected on a breadboard. Uh, so this can help them see how a circuit diagram correlates to what they could build on a breadboard. So if I were to add a battery and a light bulb here, we can see we have a battery connected to the breadboard, a light bulb connected to the breadboard, but I haven't connected them to each other. So I can either drag the light bulb and connect it to the battery, or I could even click and drag and connect a wire to the negative terminal of the battery and then click and drag the positive terminal. And we can see that as I make these adjustments, that it makes the adjustments on the breadboard. Now the light bulb hasn't been lit and that's because we need to increase the voltage to see light from the light bulb or if I wanted to adjust properties of the light bulb I can click on the label for the light bulb and I'm allowed to adjust these properties as I would like. We can also instead of using a battery source we could use an oscillating power source so I can click and drag and it replaces the battery and again we see that the light bulb is not lit and we can change the voltage or the frequency here in a couple of ways. You can either click and drag the dial and it will highlight the number or the position that you are changing the number and either increase or decrease the numbers as you see fit. Uh, alternatively, you can click on the number and type in whatever number you would like. And the number will, when it's highlighted blue, that means if you click on the number, you can change the value of that number. And if you click between numbers, this changes the uh, where the decimal is. So we can go from 12 volts to 120 volts, and we can see the difference in the light we see from the light bulb. I can adjust the units as well. Changes to 60 millihertz, and we can see the oscillation um, of the light bulb as it goes through, or if we change it to hertz, we can see how the light bulb stays consistently lit. If I were to change this to kilovolts, it defaults to one kilovolt so it doesn't overload the bulb, but if I were to try and click the decimal here, uh, as I just did, it overloaded the bulb, we burnt out the bulb, students would have to start over and that handy reset button is there for that purpose. Uh, also, so we built a circuit on a breadboard, or excuse me, in the circuit diagram and it reflected on the breadboard, the opposite is true. I could drag a light bulb to the circuit board and wait for it to snap in place. I can move this wire wherever I'd like. I'll move it here and then if I were to drag the positive and negative terminals of the battery, we can see that it builds the circuit as I've made it on the breadboard. Um, students can do things in series. They could add two light bulbs in series and connect it to a battery. And it shows them how that might be um, 
reflected on a breadboard so we can see these two light bulbs in series connected to a battery. If they were to experiment uh, with this and maybe try and connect both light bulbs here and then connect a battery here, we can see that both light bulbs light up and we can see that reflection here as to how it's organized and structured in the circuit diagram. So there's a lot of freedom to uh, use this circuit, di this circuit board and the circuit diagram. You can add whatever you'd like and throw things in. A lot, it, this allows students the freedom to explore, to adjust values and see what works, what doesn't work. And the worksheet that is provided from Beyond Labs, that's a great starting point for students to explore and think about circuits. Uh, but of course, there's freedom for you to design your own laboratory experiments as well. So that's the introduction of the basics of the circuits lab. And uh, it's a very valuable tool to get students unafraid or used to the circuit diagrams and how they connect to actual circuits.